it was our job to defend the compound. I, I wish we could have been there. New information that the CIA station chief in Libya told Washington within 24 hours of the attack that it was carried out by militants. So why did the White House continue to lie? Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer with me in New York City along with former CIA officer Gary Berntsen and former CIA operative Mike Baker joins us from Boston. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you all for being with us this evening. All right, I'm going to ask a very general question. Do we even know officially how the ambassador died? I'll start with you. Uh, I have heard no final definitive report because they have been very slow. You had the woman, the mother of one of the, the folks Pat Smith, on Sean Smith's mother. She, everybody's in the same level of runaround. No one can answer questions directly, and there's no clear answer on this. And you know what's interesting, and I'll just add this. We spoke with uh, Pat Smith today, who said she still doesn't know how her son died. But uh, uh, let me go to you, Gary. Do we, any well, information? The only stories we've heard, and it's not confirmed, was he died of smoke inhalation. All That's right, and Mike, have you heard anything official, unofficially? No, no, no not, not unofficial. There's been several different versions out there, but the only official line has been, uh, as Gary said, smoke inhalation. All right, which is so sad. Um, but look, guys, uh, you just heard General McInerney, and he was talking about an intel report uh, in a crisis that goes out from the field and pretty much goes everywhere. What's he talking about, Tony? There's something called a critic, which actually is a critical incident report, which actually is done rapidly on the spot that goes out to everybody in the community, intelligence and national security at, in real time. It tells them that essentially it's like a flare going up. It, it tells them that something critical is going on and you have to take action immediately. And specifically, and I was a chief of station three different times, so I, I, I've done this before. That report, a flash or a critic going back or, or to Washington, D.C., goes to CIA headquarters, but it also goes to the Situation Room in the White House. It goes to the Bureau of Intelligence and Research in the State Department. It how goes to the military committee. How come no one is telling us this? We all assume that they have this information immediately. We they know did. they had it. They did. They would have they had did. it. People assume that you know, the stove pipe back to CIA, it's not. When you're a chief of station and you're in a crisis, you fire out to the entire community. Right. And they oh. all got it immediately. And Mike Baker? Yeah. No, yeah. it's insane for the for the White House for the White House to have chosen the narrative that they did. It really, you know, defies you know belief and, and reality because as as Tony and, and Gary are pointing out, that intel hits the White House immediately. This is a, this is a high threat operating environment. It's a critical situation that's unfolding. They're they're screaming at Langley for information. So they get this information, and quite frankly, what I think they did was they dismissed it. They set it aside because it didn't fit the narrative that right. they wanted. And at the end of the day, I mean, you guys are saying this on this show, but I'm not hearing a lot of military people saying, are you kidding? That's they, hogwash. Oh, they, they are. Look, I, I've been called in for folks who've never talked to me. And let me make a couple of things real clear. I've, I've talked to folks who've seen the video. That video needs to get out. That video is damning. Congress, Daryl Issa asked that, for that it. That video is damning. The next thing, I've talked to folks who tell me that they, like, through classified methods, they could have had an FBI team on the ground in less than 24 hours up and ready to go. In fact, Gary, you were on the ground at, uh, or at the USS Cole, I should say. Within no, no, actually for East Africa. In 26 East hours, we were on 26. the ground and secured the ground there. But another piece of this that's not being discussed, and the president is a master at trying to deflect and change the subject, is, is that they could have pursue at least put a team on the ground to help they must have been screaming for help those people of out there of course they were and, screaming and, and there was an option there were options for them to help and intervene they could have asked for an ac-130 talon which is a large aircraft with machine guns computerized one pass would have beaten the crowd back and then they would have then they could have asked for a qr for quick reaction force but there's no discussion of why, this at all why right. would we sacrifice them i can watch we a western have. and the cavalry shows up before the fbi showed up <laughs> but this would this could have been the military could have sent a tier one team there. This fight went on for over eight hours. Oh, right. yeah, I heard. Mike? Yeah. Yeah, well, Gary, I think Gary raised a point that, that has been really infuriating uh, for, for me, and I know a lot of people, is, is the idea of deflection. And I think the White House has been actually very successful 
in kind of refocusing this. So now look, what are we doing? We're, we're discussing what was the intelligence just before or just after, yes, yeah. instead of saying, yes. wait a minute, a year ago, a year ago, they failed to do the proper thing. They failed to do a proper risk assessment of a high threat operating environment and devote the resources to secure the facility. They failed to have a crisis management plan that allowed for what happens in a situation where you get a goat rope like this and suddenly you need a counter assault team in there in rapid response. They failed to do all the basics that they should have done a year ago when they decided. I mean, look at this. They had an annex. For crying out loud, in a war zone, you've got an annex. What does that mean? That means you've got people moving back and forth between these various locations. Anytime you've got movement, you've got away, a security Mike. problem. It was a mile away. Go yeah, ahead, yeah exactly. No, it, Go, it, all right, Mike, anyway. finish. Yeah. Benghazi yeah. is on the no, coast. I, you wouldn't you even ask for diplomatic entry. They probably right. were thinking this through. Should we go or not? We would be violating Libyan airspace. So what for Libyan airspace? Go in and save your people. The government would have supported this, I'm sure. The other thing, very clear on this, when we invaded Grenada in 83, it took six hours to plan the cycle to invade a country. We could have had people there if a mule was sitting right off the coast, a Marine amphibious unit, in there in 30 minutes or less. All right, you know what? I, I'm comforted, guys, in hearing this because I am so frightened that we are so derelict in our duties. That, That's and, the and key. Our, and and by we the way, how does the intelligence community feel that they got not just thrown out of the bus, they got driven over back and forth a few times? Probably not too good. Well, yeah, look, this is... Yeah, Why didn't the, the White House have their back? One of the problems here is the intelligence community becomes the, the scapegoat always. If we get it right, they take credit. If we if we get it right and they don't like it, they, they throw us under the bus. And that's what you've seen here yes. for the past six last weeks. Last word, fast. Um, last word on this is we should have helped our people. Mike? I got 15 yeah, seconds. Uh, well, the, 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 yeah, the intel community is used to being kicked in the backside constantly. It's a very convenient ga uh, scapegoat. So that's not a surprise. But the, the part that has to be focused on is what a logistical administrative screw up this was from the very beginning right. and not allow for this deflection. All right. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, uh, Gary and Mike, CIA operatives who really know what's going on. Thanks so much for being with us this evening. Really, it's good having you.